Hey, I'm Susanna Lanier, actor and acting coach for over 25 years. I'm Jess Greenberg, casting director for over 10 years. We're here to help you navigate this crazy, creative, and sometimes chaotic journey into the film and television world. We share our insights as to what works. And invite some pretty spectacular guests to share more ideas to move you on your journey. So without further ado, let's get into the show. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking with one of Montreal's most sought after talent agents, Chacha Da Vinci of Da Vinci Talent. Welcome, Chacha. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, Jess, to my home. Thank you. Hello. Thanks for inviting me onto your podcast. I've heard such great things about it. My oh. actors are listening, they're learning yeah. things. Uh, when you invited me to come on, I went and I listened to them. Oh, good. I learned things. You never, ever stop learning. Oh, good. Yes. yes. Totally. I'm still, yes. you know, reaching out, being curious. So that's, uh, I'm, I'm happy that you're doing this uh, venture. Yeah, we love it. Yeah, cool. it's fun and makes it worth it and more fun when we get feedback like that. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome in all truth. Yeah, welcome. good. Cool. Okay. Well, um, we've worked together for many years <laughs> and I've actually never asked you about your name. Cha-cha. Cha-cha. Cha-cha da Vinci. Yeah. yeah. It's a little story. I'll tell it really quick. Yeah. yeah. Let's hear it. Um, it's not my real name, obviously. It's a stage name. What? Um, and uh, I got Cha-cha because I was a dancer oh. and I was going out with this Puerto Rican guy in New York City when I was living in New York. And all girls who who dance a lot or, or dance professionally or like, hey, Chachita, and, you know, the, the little nickname about the dance. So that stuck. And it was in the 80s in New York and everybody was going by one name, you know, Chacha Cher. Yeah. You know, you know it was that kind of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, then I, I was living with a guy in New York whose uh, last name was uh, Da Vinci. Hmm. Of course, they were from Long Island and they called themselves Vinci. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, well, where does that come from? And then, they, you know, they had a lineage to, uh, I guess, the uncle because Leonardo was gay. So be the uncle. Right. And, uh, and I said, and you don't call yourself Da Vinci? I mean, that's a sin. And then I went, see, I would be Cha-Cha Da Vinci. And I went, what? what? Cha-Cha Da Vinci. It's, okay, when I do a cold call, you yeah. know I get the first call back. When they come back from lunch and they say, you have a note? And I have, you know, people calling me back and say, what's a Cha-Cha Da Vinci? <laughs> <laughs> I'm too curious. So it works in my favor. But it was right, a stage for sure. Stage name. But my friends cool. call me Cha. So just yeah. yeah. And now it feels, I'm sure it just feels like you now, right? Well, it's been 45 years. Well, that's it. Like we only know you uh, as Cha-Cha Da Vinci. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. know you as yeah. Uh, yeah. anything as, else. Uh, and it fits you perfectly. It like, really that, does. It's your name. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, so tell us a little bit how you got started as an agent. So you mentioned you were in New York dancing. So then like what, how how did you well, get- Well, you know, it, it, well, in, in, it, to start at the end, mm -hmm. um, being an agent is being an advocate for an artist. Mm -hmm. Right. And to be the best advocate that you can in this position, this middleman position of taxi dispatch and accountant and, <laughs> you know, and mentor. And uh, you, you have to understand what the, the animal is. What is what is the theater? What is the importance of storytelling? How yeah. does this uh, affect humanity? Why, why is this important? And why do people choose this? Because, you know, people don't real actors, people don't choose to be actors, right? Yeah. Acting chooses them. Mm -hmm. it's, kind of a, it's kind of a cult thing where you're going to say, okay, do or die. This is who I am. And this is how I'm going to um, go through my life in this, mm -hmm. in this beautiful way of uh, self-expression through uh, this particular art form. Right. I'm from California. Um, always danced, did the musical theaters in school, um, and then went off uh, early to um, first New York and then to London. And I studied with the Martha Graham School. Wow. I joined companies and was touring around Europe. And I busted my, so there's storytelling. So that, so yeah. first and foremost, that's where I come in with storytelling because you're right. I mean, I was Medusa. You're the, you know, whatever. It's a modern dancer. You can be anything. You can right. be a gargoyle, whatever. <laughs> <that is>. um, <laughs> 
then um, I busted my shoulder so I couldn't be in a company anymore. I couldn't work for a choreographer and then say, oh yeah, but I can't do that on that side. Right. Mm -hmm. But I still had a lot of dance left in me. So I went back to New York. You know, I'm also a singer. So I started doing, it was this 1980s, New York, right. performance art, cabaret, right? It's, it was the heyday of this time. And so I, um, and I'm a writer. Uh, I write songs I'm, and um, hooked up with some musicians, wrote a show, a uh, one woman show that I would, then I took on to. I uh, got into the club scene and then um, uh, was touring a lot, had different bands, had a parallel disco career, but that was just kind of a money-making thing, like doing commercials to the yeah. artwork. Uh, my my group was called, finally, the, the most successful was called Andronix. It was kind of a gender-bending five member group and we uh, only song and dance and we told stories we we were gargoyles we were <laughs> uh stuffed pigs we were uh jackie onassis we were um uh mermaids we were you know whatever and it right. was done yeah. like a like a band so it was like 12 songs in a set okay so huge costume changes and huge you know changes of character and stuff that sounds I take fun. that and I start touring around that and I go like every, five times a year I come up to Montreal to perform right by the early 90s and stuff and I finally you know I fell in love with this guy and I stayed and uh because I was um dabbling too much in, in the bad stuff in the in the clubs and right so it's not a good direction for me and I yeah. you know I do eventually want to have my my child and so I came up and I and I worked uh had several bands up here dubbed the rockabilly queen of quebec by oh Frank. my goodness oh, my. <laughs> wow I don't like rockabilly <laughs> <laughs> you know, because my husband at the time had a rockabilly uh band wow they, uh, lost their singer so i you know i stepped in but stepped in. but then i did you know that evolved and jump and jive and then i worked with luc fortin and we did a i did a one woman show with the nac and then i was hired to do one on the hill of okay. their own writing. So at that point, I've had my kid and a, a upheaval in my own life made me say, I've got to, um, I've got to buckle down and make an enormous amount of cash. Right. In the, in the time that I have left. Mm -hmm. And this is like, I'm in my mid forties. So, okay. so when I go, okay, that's good. But I don't see it. Like, I'm not going to become Celine. I'm not going to have, you know, I'm not going to put her through college on, on club work. Yeah. Right. So I, it was a hard decision to walk away, but you don't walk away empty handed. You walk right. away with an enormous amount of, I mean, I'm an artist. I might walk away with all my experience and all my being directed and all the good stuff that I've learned and, and failed at failing, failing, lots of failing, lots of learning, yeah. lots of getting better. And um, when I said, well, you know, I've never had a straight job. I said, what do you know how to do? And I know how to book artists. Yeah. Because I understand what they need. Yeah. But I also have the, I don't know if it's the left, right side of the brain, where I've also got that organizational mm -hmm. skill. Right. You know, okay. I can keep the, I know the times and I get all the guys in for the band rehearsals and I know when we're supposed to be there. And like a chef having all the ingredients ready, but it's all going to be one gorgeous hot meal at the end of the, you know, by the time you're supposed to serve it and it all, you know, it all comes out perfectly. Yeah. You need that when you're, you know, of course, in the movie industry as well. Um, and I and I knew that I didn't want to work as an agent in uh, or doing any booking in music because it's okay. a shark, uh, right? Vested ocean of lawyers and and stuff, and I mm -hmm. I didn't want to take that on. But actors <gasps> are unionized. Yeah, and I'm a union girl. Oh, oh good. We hang together. We make stuff happen. <laughs> I don't, you know, part of the joy of my job is just making sure that everybody's treating my people right. Yeah. yeah. I say, so, um, I'm going to go and tell your mother if you start cheating on that, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Way to behave and not with my kids, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Kids, they could be 80 years old, but they're still Right. But they're, they're, yeah, <laughs> they're yours. You're, you're, yeah, I'm exactly. exactly. <laughs> Mama Cha. Yeah. Mama Cha. That's, That's great. Mama, Mama Cha. So, so I went and uh, I was signed with Epic. 
That's what I, I told Jess. I said, Tina. she started with, I remember I was a receptionist at Elite. I started yeah. receptionist in 1995. And I said, Chacha wasn't a Vinci talent yet. Because mm -hmm. I remember she worked. Did you work with Tina? Well, no, yes, eventually. Okay. Because okay. Uh, my daughter had done a, I was doing a dance job, made a connection. My daughter did a commercial. Then, so I said, well, you know, if you don't mind doing it, if you want to do it, we can get you a little agent. And yeah, we found Tina and she said, what about you? And I said, okay, you know. I became after and like I did a couple of things and uh but it's not for me I'm not an actor right I can yeah. I can act yeah I'm not called. you're a performer more. I'm a performer entertainer a singer yeah. dancer performer entertainer and and I do that banter with the audience I can and which which leads me to um this maybe a little aside but reading people right mm. when you when you go on stage alone like in front of a band if you're the front person or you're doing a one woman show or one man show you go out and the first thing you have to do is read them right you have to read them as a group and that and then you have to read them individually seek them out you have to be yeah. curious about who they are and how they feel and where can you manipulate them to feel better or more uncomfortable if you want <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I just a lot saying of, yeah I did a lot of sitting in men's laps and polishing their bald head <laughs> so you went the I discomfort loved it. <laughs> <laughs> the wife comes up and says thank you cha-cha I'm getting laid tonight <laughs> uh, yeah but we just did we were just talking about uh, we might change the name of the podcast from book the room to read the room. Read the room, right? I think it's a, it's a good name. It's a yeah. really, really and it's funny name. that you just I think it's a good name. Yeah. You just brought it up about reading the room. Are. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so this thing that I can do of reading a room, I can also then apply. It transfers over immediately. Um, like one of your questions about how do you know who you want to bring onto your roster? Yes. So your roster yeah. My roster is my little jewel box. Right. Yeah. Right. It's my little box of my little special. They're not little. They're huge. They're magnificent. Each one deserves its their own box. But I could even wind up the ballerina at the top and just go, would you like to have a little uh, sexy um, Peruvian? Um, you know, what would you like? <laughs> what would you like? I've got this. Yeah. When when people come and ask, you know, that they want to be represented, the first thing you have to do is to read them. Right. And read them and see what does it mean? What are they looking for? Um, are they prepared? Are they an old soul or a young soul? Mm -hmm. And they improve? Are they open? Mm -hmm. Are they, uh, do they have courage? Yeah. Which is, I think acting is one of those jobs where you have to balance the moment on the head of a pin. And there's, and it works and the magic is suspended and you were there and you were all in belief. But if you come in, you know, and you can't, you can't do it. You doubt yourself. You're, you're not daring enough to be vulnerable enough. Right. All that stuff. So when somebody comes in and I'm just reading them and seeing how they, and then it could take a while for me to get a good read on them and I've already taken them and it may not work. Right. Because they're, they, A, don't understand what's, actually what the job is actually mm -hmm. what it entails and what um, how would you describe what the job is as an actor well yeah. it's a 360 degree I mean, it's 360 you've got to have the whole piece of fruit to make the salad you know right you you could be a brilliant actor i've had brilliant actors who can't respond on the telephone can't okay. get back to me lose jobs right Cannot be represented because this is a business. An actor sees themselves as a as an artist, and I'm here to create, and then I'm supposed to do all the rest. Mm -hmm. But you have to. We're partners. You have to uh, engage in you or yourself as a business. Yeah, yeah. I represent me. I so that means that I put out. A, I want to have a good reputation. I show up on time. I am prepared. I have gone above and beyond in terms of character development. I'm going to bring you something special. Right. I'm just gonna, you know, oh, this is fun, and show up and do my thing, and then you you don't stand out. There's something about pushing the envelope and push your artistry further and dare and and be creative. 
Yeah. Um, there's a whole financial um, understanding you have to have about yourself as a business, a whole just in terms of updating your CV or uh, making sure that when you move, everybody knows where to send the checks <laughs> or, you know, just mundane things like that. Yeah. If it doesn't click, then it makes it hard and then it's it's cumbersome and it's and then it's probably bothersome to the person who's it's not in in their personality traits to take care of that stuff. Yeah, that's when I when ideally the people I love to work with the most are these real well smart. Yeah. Well rounded, they see it. Uh, at, uh, there's an art and uh, of the fine. There's the art, and then there's the financial, and then there's the grunt work. Yeah. It, you know, and don't forget yeah. about it because because today might be the day we get the million dollar phone call and I don't have your updated demo. Right. And so I, I don't know how to help you more than us working together and making sure that you are the, the, the shiniest, best presented person, an actor on the market so that they turn yeah. it immediately. When you're well packaged, man, that's half the battle right there. They say, right. okay, a, you're going to show up when you have a good headshot and you've got a CV that's up to date. And it's got some, you know, obviously nice credits on it. But even if it's not, but if it's well yeah. formatted or if it's got, you've got something to show of your acting on my site or they, they'll take more of a chance on you than if it comes in under, you know, and you're just kind of half in. You can't be half in and half out. Right. You got to be is why, you know, it, This is why people stop over time. Because then you say, it's not as fun as I thought. I thought it was going to be like when we were in school. Right. I thought <laughs> that I, it looked so easy looking at it on TV. Right. I could do that. Yeah. Oh. Final product. Okay, I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just, you know, like to see you try. <laughs> yeah. I, I wanted to ask, to, over the years, you've had some actors who have gone on to great success. Mm -hmm. Have you see any commonalities between them, the ones who have really... I don't want to say made it, but you yeah. have had some who've who've made it on you yeah. know big shows yeah. and stuff like that. Did you see any traits, or was it luck? What do you think? Oh no, I think it's a singular thinking. Okay, and having the business mind, right? The uh, uh, all the traits that I had talked about before about being uh, daring enough, uh, believing in themselves enough. Yeah, yes, this is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so, what do I have to do next to make it happen? One of these yeah. people would be Moji Lamour. Yeah. Who is now finished off the fifth season of Ted Lasso. I know, and he's going to come on the podcast. Is he I really? I emailed him. He's so great. And I think you told him back in the day, 15 years ago, come take my class. And he took it. And now he's like recommended so many people to take it. So it's been such a, a joy. And he's, yeah. So hopefully we'll get him. We'll get him here. But he did email me back. Oh, he will, he'll do it. And he's such a gentleman. And so, he's, he's such so a sweetheart. Great. Um, his story, in fact, is an, an example of uh, that no job is is too small in your trajectory. I mean, if you're if you're doing uh, leads, you're not going to go do extra work. You know, I mean, there is that. Yeah. Both. But you you never know where anything is going to come from. So with, Mo had auditioned for the film Race, right? So he had this role, and they hired him, and it you know it wasn't you know he's one of the runners, and uh, they said we need you to grow your hair in about an inch, and he said I can't. I have alopecia. Okay. So they he lost the job. And I said to the the to the whoever I was talking to, the AD or the producer, I said, give me four hours. <laughs> yeah, four, four hours. hours. Okay. Don't just and we're gonna be there. Just give me four hours. And they did. Yeah. We hightailed it up to the area where all the black uh wig shops are. Right. Bought them a hundred dollar wig ran back down to Mel's to an adjacent, he had just finished, I think, X-Men or some things. And he, okay. of course, all the hairdressers are absolutely in love with him. So we we had phoned ahead and, you know, knocked on the other hairdressers, <laughs> you know, the guy who just stopped working with him. And he says, of course, I'll style it. He styles it. We walk over to the next door and we stop and there's the director of the hallway. And I go, ta-da. Wow. Oh my God. You're okay. a good yeah. agent, man. That's yeah. saving. You were like, I am, it, yeah. this is not going to die here. Yeah. Not on and my not, watch. Not on <laughs> my, my watch. watch. I don't know what I'm doing here if I'm not doing that. You know? Yeah, yeah. good so for you. I love that. He meets Jason. 
He moves out to LA, gets his O-1, works, I mean, just that, just working the legal system to be able to work in the United Oof. States. Yeah. It takes a whole another mindset. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And determination and and stick with itness. Yeah. yeah. And uh he did a play in Pasadena theater. Wow. You know, and Jason came. He invited wow. him to come because they'd become friends mm-hmm. from the shoot. Off. Yeah. During the shoot and he took them out to clubs and they became, you know, they became friends. And so Jason says, I have a role for you. You have to audition for it. But, you know, in yeah. London, shooting in London. And you can live with me. Oh, my gosh. <gasps> so then he gets to live in the posh. You know, I'm sure Jason has some nice. Uh, yeah, know, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what a um, great story. And, wow. the rest, you know, and so you don't know. You so know, when people know. say, oh, I don't think I'm going to pass on that. You don't know. Yeah where your that one phone that million dollar phone call that that little shot is going to be yeah yeah absolutely that's literally like booking the room and like like in a way like because had you said like oh screw these producers the fucking hair that's going to be the yeah. i'm like this yeah. is you yeah. know and you're like no this is an easy fix like we're going after it yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a wig what yeah we don't have time to wig yeah. him I'll wear them. I'll wear them. Wow. <laughs> I I love that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But it's also, you know, belief in themselves, but also yeah. like that support from you that is like yeah. beautiful and amazing. And yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And yeah. but but he but he's one who just knows how to get around the world and he knows how to get the O one and he oh, here's another story about oh he's gonna tell you. I'm telling you most stories. Yeah, don't tell it. Yeah. Tell us. <laughs> hopefully but that's okay he'll he'll tell us again but yeah what I, what I wanted to say is yeah don't worry we can hear this story over and over it's a yeah. good story <laughs> yeah yeah he's got plenty he's so special yeah but I wanted to say that's I mean Jess and I talked about that and I said because I've been teaching a while it is though I mean talent is wonderful and you you know what you're talking about but then there is that extra level and I have noticed they're ambitious they're strategic um they 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 see like you said that singular vision they see where they want to go and they know that there are steps and they're they're persistent they're patient they're talented and beautiful and all that stuff but also and strategic strat, strat, strategy you and you have to have that well that's what I've noticed is a common thread mm-hmm. with the ones who have ended up on you know big shows that they 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 really went for it mm-hmm. um because I've had lots of talented actors who have quit or who are continuously not you know doing what as far as they can go and I really think it's the ambition and strategy where it's not uh, somehow clicking for them. And then you see some people who are uh, talented, but that they have another, like an attitude problem about uh, well, yeah, mm-hmm. about having to be um, catered to, or uh, mm-hmm. there's a there's a humbleness, a humility that they're that they're kind of lacking, or they need, or they're needy, or or something else is festering that um, keeps them uh, insecure and. So that each each time they don't get the role after they've auditioned is devastating and whittles away at their self confidence, and then they don't. Oh, I can't do. I can't do that. I can't suffer the rejection anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then there are other people that go, "Well, of course, only one person got it." Yeah. You know why not me? Well, why why you? I mean, <laughs> yeah. first off, you have no idea about the whole casting process of a family, uh, a look for the show, mm-hmm. uh, style, you know, sizes, you know, you know, you five, one with a six foot five husband is not going to work. Uh, yeah. You, there are so many variables in this. Yeah. And so, so if an actor really has also the, um, experience, even if they started off as an extra to see the, how mammoth these productions are, how, how, when it looks like nothing's going on, everything is going on. <laughs> yeah. And I said, just study it and say, why aren't those guys hanging those lights right now? Yeah. Is it because they're waiting for what? Where's the ballet? Yeah. Where's the choreography in this? It's very interesting. But if you just kind of um, don't have a, a sense of 
uh, how you fit into the puzzle of a, making a film or making a TV show or a commercial, whatever whatever it is. If you don't see your place in in um, in juxtaposition juxtaposition of all the variants, then then you get a little lost and and like you don't know what you're that you're part of a bigger. And uh, it feels more personal if you don't. Yeah, and then I don't think you deliver your best work. Right. Yeah. No, totally. Because it whittles away at you. So what do you tell your clients who are, you know, feeling discouraged about the business? I said, you have to take it in hand. You okay. have more power and control of this than you think. Okay. Um, if you don't enjoy the process of uh, studying, coaching, going to classes, uh, g acting gyms, if you don't, if you're feeling... Um, like you're not working enough and you're not in touch with your expression. It's not like, you know, uh, you paint, you can just paint whenever you want. You kind of have to have these situations where you're acting with people. I said, yeah. you just study scenes and tape yourself, but become involved with uh, your fellow actors uh, and do your own gyms or, yeah. or create, make short films, do it on your phone. It, it really, um, it really doesn't uh, matter quality wise, as long as you're being creative. And if that doesn't turn your crank and doesn't itch, like scratch that itch a little bit while you're also then waiting for the next audition yeah. to know that you are, you are a um, producing artist, then of course you're going to be frustrated and maybe this isn't for you. Okay. Because there will be this downtime. Yeah. Between any even major film stars have downtime. Of course, for sure. You know, and what are they doing? You know, are they doing volunteer work? Are they raising <laughs> their children? Are they making, are they becoming executive producers on products that, you know, projects they they believe in? I mean, wherever they are, you have to know how to live an entire life in this yes. calling as opposed to yeah. just, um, how do I book the room? You know, yeah. Book that? And that's the, that's the whole measure of my, uh, value as an actor is how much I book. No, it isn't. Right. right. You can, you know, I've seen the best actors disappear and the worst actors who have more of that tenacious and resilience have great <laughs> careers. And you're yeah. Going, what the hell happened there? <laughs> yeah. It's it's true. Bad. So it, it's that balance of every, of everything in this. I mean, managers come in, managers are different than agents. Yep. And sometimes I do step into a managerial role. Right. And that's just because of mama chop. Right. And because I don't know why else I'm doing this because I don't want to just be a, a spreadsheet a taxi dispatch. That's not my calling. Right. Yeah. And I know that I have a lot of uh, heart to give uh, wisdom. I'm an old lady now. And I've got it. Mm -hmm. So the good part of that is to say, so what did you learn, Shaw? Right. So, and is it, and I'm, you know, articulate enough to be able to pass it on. I, I've got the words for it. Yeah. And uh, and you don't waste them on people whose hearts aren't open to hear it. Right. Until they, you, you know, kind of bring them up until the point where you can say, now, you know, this is the point when I can say this and it will work. Because otherwise it's over their head. Right. You know, you're just wasting your breath. And, yeah, you're wasting yeah. your breath. It's, it's just too too much too soon and. But you know, I I believe in people when I when I believe in somebody and they're very fresh, I'm I'm happy to, you know, take the journey with them. Right. Yeah. You know, that's very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And could you explain to us a little bit about maybe for people who don't really know the difference between an agent and a manager and like the roles? Because some people have both. Some like yeah. in Montreal, yeah. do you think well, it kind of crosses? Even... Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. To Kind of crosses over uh, sometimes because the managers can also pitch for roles. Mm -hmm. um, I would just describe it very simply as an agent is um, not only writing the breakdowns and just pitching a large number of people, uh, usually a large, you know, a good group. Like I say, I have 70 and I try to mm -hmm. find something for everybody. Um, and then just the accounting and all of that stuff that goes with it and getting them the sides and getting yeah. them the links and all of this other this stuff or telling them where they're supposed to show up. Uh, a manager is uh, more like what I do. I, I've got a new uh, actor I'm very excited about, Gabriel Infante. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Gloriously, the first um, actor that I have that's really penetrated the uh, Quebecois star system. Fantastic. And when he came out on the cover of Echo Vidette. Yes. I was like, I, you know, I've been doing this now for what, 24 years? And I said, I never thought I'd see the day. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. <laughs> and he, eat, and brilliantly, this man has an accent. Yes. Quebec, you know, an yes. accent is like the kiss of death. Yes. <laughs> and here he is. They're loving it. He's doing well in English. He's doing, so what I do for him. Yeah. Is that I, I make solutions. Okay, I got to get there. I'm there, there. I said, okay, I'm booking a flight. I'm booking a flight. You're going to go there. I'm going to get a driver. He's going to pick you up at the place. And then we're going to have that delivered. Yeah. Okay, I just go that extra mile, that personal extra mile into his personal life. I don't leave it in his hands. Yeah, and that's a definite him. manager. That's, that's a manager. Manual. That's not an agent. Agents well, like, that's like getting in well, the car and going, getting the wig is more like manager. That's yeah. a manager like that. Yeah. And that's why I think your clients love you, Cha. Like I haven't had one student over the years who have been like, I'm a Cha. Yeah, she's okay. They're all like, <laughs> oh, I love her. Like they love you, but you love them the way I you're talking them. about them. You believe in them. You want to package them as shiny, yeah. <laughs> you know, like. And the ones who don't get it or don't get you <laughs> don't get me. I mean, I'm unique. I, I'm a little unique in the sense that, uh, you know, I come on a little strong and I'm, I'm not a afraid of uh, speaking my mind or whatever, even though I do have uh, the wisdom of uh, editing myself. And no one <laughs> if it's not a good fit, it's not a good fit. And right. you know, speaking another language and you just need somebody who's a little, a little more English in the English. That's not so, it's not so uh, Latin, not so, um, maybe not so passionate. Right. You know? Yeah. But this is also the, I quit my career to do this, but I brought every, all of my passion from my career to this. Yes. Yeah. That's how I live. And, and if I'm going to create something, and in this case, I created this beautiful agency of all those wonderful artists, then wonderful. it's going to take you know, I'm bringing my artistry to it. That's right. And I, you know, and take care of them, listen to their problems. <laughs> <laughs> and, well, that yeah. that's, yeah, that's why I did want to say you, you're, you have so much energy and you're positive and upbeat. And I've known uh, um, agents over the years and they get a little burnt out by now, you know? So how do you keep <laughs> feeling that passion for it? Like, is there a secret? Cause I, yeah, just question. Oh, I can, I get more burned out by the repetitivity, repetitivity. Sure. Repetitivity. I don't know. Good. Repetitive. Repetitive. Yes. I got it. Of, yeah. um, of the projects. Okay. That to me, it's like, oh, Christmas and crime. Right. We should do a lot of this. I said, oh, guess we're in Vermont now. Oh, no, it's the guy who's got to decide between New York and the Maple Syrup Song. Right, you know? right. Um, I feel that, slightly that attacked. Little, that gets it. The, the, um, the union, the, the rules, the union stuff, the politics of it still en enthralls me. This, because I'm a, I'm an activist and I like the union busting and all of that it's it's right uh, really close to home so i can bring my political energies to that so yeah you know because i'm hugely blm i am an american i was in the 60s i you know i'm i, I still vote i i march you know yeah I mm -hmm. uh, i've got a, a closet full of uh signs we got women's mm -hmm. liberation signs we've got the Olympics. you ask i got a sign for you you know for yeah. <laughs> political yeah. march that that I find intriguing and interesting, and it keeps me keeps me going. Um, the actors are evolving their their organisms. They are there. It's a garden. It's how do you get tired of your garden? Right. You know. Oh dear! It came up a tulip again. <laughs> <laughs> the artistry, the art, the the matching of the. Uh, the talents of the actor and temperament of the actor to the character and how I think it fits into the, I'm also a screenwriter, a script right. writer. So in that sense, I also, I'm interested in then seeing how does 
like a character development, the arc of the character is this person, could he handle it? Is, does he have the, the, the chutzpah, the, the, the stuff to bring to the table to be able to, you know, do that? And I, that's completely interesting. Meeting new people, new actors, new, you know, that stuff, completely interesting. Yeah. Uh, uh, taking in the checks, doing accounting, I forbid myself to ever complain about that. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, good yeah. for you. Oh, not more. <laughs> I <don't even> <laughs> good for you. I know. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to deal with that because I, I get it. when I have to do my billing, I'm always like, ugh, and I'm like, don't do that. Bad energy. You uh -uh, gotta be like, uh -uh. yes, you be like, yes, my, yes. my problem should be so hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yes. Thank you, Ty. You put me in a, I'm going to change when I got to do my billing after this. And it's going to be like, <laughs> yes, you owe me money. It's not that I don't, but I, you know, I, I do catch myself and say, you know, don't do it. Thank but you. Yeah. You get tired. True. It's, but it's, I concentrate less on the, the, the repetitive stuff. Right. All right. Here's another breakdown. Right. You know, it's more like, okay, who hasn't done a bank? I don't mean rob a bank. Right. I mean, who hasn't done a bank, bank commercial, commercial? Right. And, yeah. Oh no. And then we laugh. Oh no. It's like we won't have anybody. And you know, and how do they do that? And um, you know. Yeah. But you find your your places and and um and like I said, I also have my own uh art and I've you know got scripts that are out being read and I, I have this other feeling like something's churning for me in the future. Yeah. Right. So you like to do both. You still st you and you like you said you bring your creativity into yeah being an agent. So it's yeah. not it's not like oh I wanted to be a creative but I've become a business no. woman. Boom. No. It's like you're no. both. You're you no. you stayed whole. Yeah. I was always both at the beginning when I was the, the on stage. Wow. One time I went, I was running on stage and, and here she is, Cha-Cha Da Vinci. And I had a pencil in my hand. Okay. I went, oh, <laughs> oh, that's my agent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Take that's the mic. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. But I mean, yeah, to keep that whole and then to keep it fresh. Because otherwise it would become just, uh, um, if you were just clocking in and clocking out. And weren't yeah. interested. I, because I write and uh, um, and I'm a storyteller. All of the actors are characters, right? And I learn from them, and then I and then I, and then they and then we groove and we laugh and we, we get these friendships, and then I get to hear little stories about them, and and it's it's just this churning, uh, beautiful. It's like some beautiful meal or something, you know. It's, and it's all. Yeah. Really you know, I love it. It's like a little, like, eco, not an ecosystem. Yes, like, yes. it's like a little, you yes. know, like you said, a yes. living, breathing organism, and they're all together yes. and they're yours. And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And a lot, and, you know, I've had since the beginning. Yeah. And um, okay. I just, and also, I like to get better at what I do. And so for casting as an agent, I will sometimes, like, they'll say, we need a little flower shop old lady. Like, she's right. selling flowers. Uh, so I, I submitted a 300 pound gay black man. Right. Cause it could, it would be interesting to see. And, and it's different. Yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> you yeah. know, they had to put a little scarf on. <laughs> neck, you know? I mean, yeah. Sure. But it was hysterical. Yeah. You know? So why does it have to be a little old white lady? Yeah. yeah. No, this that's great. Totally fabulous. Yeah, and fun <laughs> and and yeah, I think it's great. Well, I think it is. I think it is. Like you said with the uh, Gabriel, it is getting better. The casting, they are. They're trying. It. Open. They're trying. They're making uh, definitely with the commercial world over COVID. They really did a diversity push, which is great. Yeah. You know, it's great. Our podcast. So look at the industry like you look at the industry with an open heart and saying like, okay, well, what's fun about it? Like you're passionate about what's happening with Gabriel's career, starting to break into the French market and he's got an accent and he's got brown skin and that's fun and that's exciting. And you're happy you're sharing that journey with him as opposed to saying, oh crap, another damn Christmas movie. And I got, <laughs> you know, you're looking at what's, you're realistic. I mean, so yeah. your first, the same, your first yeah. rodeo, yeah. but you're also 
passionate and, and sinking into the good yeah. feeling space. And so I think we're also hopefully creating this podcast with that intention yeah. saying, yeah. it doesn't all suck guys. Like it's, no. <laughs> there's, there, you know, there's fun no. stuff about it. And maybe, maybe, you know, you're not booking as much as you want and the projects aren't as exciting as you want, but look at what's working and what you're enjoying about it. And what can you do? Like you said, we have more agency than we actually yes think we have yeah. can I add a little uh, point of course um, when people get frustrated in Montreal that there's not enough productions that they're not working and they um very tempted often get up and go to Toronto right away yeah too soon too soon because what we have here is a pearl of a situation in Montreal where our small group of actors get to work with world-class directors Yes, on sets that we have a small uh, pool and talented pool. We have yes. very talented actors in Montreal. Yeah. And, uh, but they think, and it's a smaller pond and they get to work on bigger projects and learn yes. with bigger uh, named actors. So, and then they jump over to Toronto and then you know fuck all happens yeah it just goes dead and they're lost and they're never seen they audition like once a year or they do the same thing get they go directly to LA they have no papers they have no connection they just think I got to be in the hot spot but the hot spot isn't there right you're not ready for that hot spot so here's my analogy when I tried to describe this to keep an actor in Montreal mm -hmm. for a while I said, it's like a lock system for boats. You're at the bottom, the water is floating up, the boat is coming up to the le next level. So now your CV yeah. is strong, so you can go over at a Toronto level, equal with successful Toronto actors. Get a good agent who's going to get you in the room. Yes. You won't have to be, you know, not floating around with some bad agent who can't even, they're not looking at their actors. Right. You have an agent doesn't make you an actor. Mm -hmm. so you're there get you know if you can get a series if you can build it up up again you yeah get up again before you go to LA because yeah. to go to LA you have to be an established actor not an aspiring actor yeah you can mm -hmm. get in there with a you know some recurring some guest star something that looks like you know this and you can get some um uh, letters from directors that say loved working with this actor and you know then you have a chance going over too soon with nothing is uh our career suicide i think yeah, yeah. yeah that is not it's strategic not <laughs> strategic. I don't think that people should uh, berate montreal for the quality of work that we produce the talent that we have here just because we're small yeah, yeah. I agree. We're small, small, but we're, we're strong. So we're strong. We're yeah. different. We're we're not so English. Yeah. And because English people are affected by the French culture. So we're, you know, again, more Latin, more fiery, more. Yeah. We have a lot to give. Yeah. yeah. We have a lot to give and we should believe in ourselves and um, and keep a, an eye on the, the, the long haul, the big picture. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that's, Love that. thank you. That's great. So we are going to have to wrap it up, but last question, what's next for Cha? What's in the pipeline for you? What are you excited about? What's going on? Hey, well, like I said, I've been writing. Yes. I have a couple of features that are out. Um, one has been optioned. Uh, Woo, congratulations. And, then, uh, and another is being an, an, a comedy that I wrote a comedy, a real dish on my family about it's a, this dysfunctional family. And that's also in the hands of a couple of uh, producers. So we'll see if that goes. Wow. So if so, fingers crossed, just like any any artist who's just putting themselves out there, some interest will get picked up. I have I made a, a short film uh, directed by Henri Pardot. And, oh, right. Of course. And uh, Mariah mm -hmm. Inger uh, produced it. And that went through the festival circuit and won a lot of awards. So I know, you know, I know we're on the right track amazing so that's, congratulations that be, that's my dream going forward is that i have more help in the agency always there for the the big needy stuff that needs me yeah. but that i get to go back now at uh i'm almost 70 to go back now to more time for me as a creative artist yeah wow without wow. ever leaving the agency i don't want anyone to think that i'm not i'm not going to be there for them oh no it's you're also going to be there for me yes it's yes. last chapter of my life 
Yeah. Oh, fantastic. And, and that's it. You've got, you're surrounded by supportive people. I know Mariah works there sometimes. Your daughter's working there. So you have Lydia. great Lydia. people. Lydia's there. Yeah. So you have yeah. super yeah. smart. Yeah. I mean, because Lydia is a, an actor, working actor. Yeah. So, you know, as soon as she has to go and work, then she goes, you know. You yeah. are all set up. I'm set up. You're yeah. set up. Oh, congratulations. Oh, I love you, Chuck. ladies. Well, I love Thank you, Chai. You, so you are fantastic. Thank you so much for this. And uh, it's always a pleasure to see you. You always. look fantastic. Thank and you. you know, I've known you for 25 years and you haven't changed at all. Like, <laughs> like, honestly, I mean, you, you really, I mean, you've changed a little, your hair is longer now. And so, but really, it's, it's really a pleasure. And I think you're just getting more passionate and joyful yeah. and yeah. just more. You really are when they say that cliche of the fine wine, I think you really could stand there with your, <laughs> as the fine wine, because it's true. So. Oh, that's thank, you. Yeah. thank you. It's all true. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll, we'll speak soon. Thanks. Okay. okay. Later. Bye. So for today's takeaways, one, believe in yourself, be courageous and daring Two, understand how you fit into the puzzle. That is productions. You won't take things as personally when you understand just how much is at play. Three, there is no job too small. You never know where one may lead you Four. There is a difference between an established actor and an aspiring one. Know where you stand and make your moves accordingly. Five, every actor and agent is different. Finding the right match will be key to everyone's success. Thank you so much for listening. See you next time. Bye.